Hey what's up guys, I'm Mo and today I'm talking with you about the 5D Classic and why you should not buy this camera in 2018. Stay tuned. So if you have been watching my recent videos, I've been looking really really hard for the perfect full frame budget camera as to speak. Um, I bought the 1D which is not even a full frame, it's just a um, APS-H camera, 1.3 crop. It's better than the 1.6 that I have on my ADD. I bought the 1DS Mark II. I love that camera. I really enjoyed using this camera. I'm gonna link those two videos right here. I'm also gonna put them in the description in case you can watch them at the end of this video. I was watching a whole bunch of YouTube videos and everybody was recommending to get the 5D Classic. They're saying it's the best budget DSLR. It's, you know, great, got some great pictures and, you know, yada, 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 as I'm sure you've all seen by now. Um, so I picked it up. Uh, this camera can range anywhere from 250 to 350 on eBay. Uh, if you get it used, obviously you can't buy it new right now. I was able to pick it up for $200, uh, which is a really good deal, actually. I used it for a good two weeks and here are my thoughts um, and why I'm going to be selling this camera this Sunday. First of all, this camera has an amazing image quality. For a camera of this age, only 12 megapixels, it's got some amazing, amazing quality. Uh, I was able to go to the zoo. I got some beautiful um, images of eagles. Um, as you can see here, the original image was really like wide and I cropped the heck out of that image. Like pretty much, you sh nobody should be able to crop anything that, <laughs> that much. You should just get a longer lens and and call it a day, but I really cropped this image heavily. And you can see that even with this much crop, the image is still very sharp. So the fact that this 12 megapixel camera was able to crop in about, you know, three to one and still give me a sharp image, it's, it just shows that how good these cameras used to perform back in the day. Other than that, this camera has only 12 megapixels on its really large sensor versus my ADD that has double the megapixels on a much smaller sensor. So there's a lot more pixel density on my ADD versus this camera. So on its highest ISO, which is I believe 3200 on the H1 setting, it's still pretty good actually. It's, it, the performance is really, really well. I love that it has a joystick. You're able to control the points. I love the feel in your hand. It's nice and large. Um, it's not very heavy yet it's not very small like a crop sensor camera so it really fits perfectly in my hands as you can see i have pretty large hands so a lot of good to say about this camera so why don't i recommend it in 2018 well i honestly believe that you can get something a little bit better for just a little bit more so for 200 dollars, i bought this camera for 100 dollars more i was able to get the 5d mark ii which is right here. Granted, that's a really good price. On eBay right now, this camera is going for anywhere from 450 to 550. I was able to pick it up for 300. How I get these deals, long story, I can make a separate video about that if you guys really wanna know. Uh, and also planning on making a separate video about the 5D Mark II in the future. So why don't I recommend the 5D Classic? Well, for starters, the 5D Classic uses this battery. Uh, I don't have any cameras that take this battery. My ADD takes the LP E6. Um, so does the 5D Mark II, 5D Mark III, even the EOS R, he takes this battery. This battery is very, very popular. Um, so, but this battery does not go in here and I have a ton of these batteries. So it only made sense for me to get a camera or get a second body or third body in this case that would take this battery right here. So this is one of the reasons why I didn't like the 5D Classic. Another reason that is that I, the whole reason why I wanted to get a full frame camera in the first place was that it can perform well at high ISOs. My ADD is an amazing camera, but everybody's bragging about how full frame cameras can do really, really well in low lighting conditions and high ISO. So what was the point of me getting a full frame camera that can only go up to 3200 ISO? But my ADD can far, far outperform that. Not to mention, this camera does not have video. Not that it's an important thing, actually. A lot of people that are learning photography before a camera that does not shoot video because, you know, it's less options, less points on the camera, less strain on the camera. But for me, I think video is an important aspect because of, I get here YouTube or Instagram or any of my client work. Sometimes I'm shooting and I don't want to just switch cameras. I have the body on me. I just need to press a button and take a quick video. Also, 
This camera is really, really slow. So from the time you click the shutter button to the time that the picture appears on the back of the screen, it's about two to three seconds, which is, it's, it's actually a lot, a long time. It really is a long time. And it's worse when you are taking a couple of pictures in a row. Now, this camera is 3.6 frames per second. So if you're, th if you're holding the shutter button down for maybe like one second or two seconds and you take like four or five pictures, you're gonna be waiting a long time for those images to appear on the screen. And I thought initially that it was I was using a slow card, so I went on and I bought the fastest CF card possible. And I put it in the camera and see if that would help and actually did not help whatsoever. So I, I read online and it turns out that this camera is that slow. Um, I, I thought this wasn't an issue because I came from the AD, which is really fast. And then when I bought the 1DS Mark II, or the 1D, they were also really fast, but it turns out that they were really fast because they're the professional line of the $8,000 cameras. Whereas this one was not the professional, just the premium. Therefore, Canon was able to get away with having that slow of a blackout time, I think it's called. Honestly, that was like a big no-no for me. I could not stand like waiting that long. Imagine you're at a shoot with a client and you're taking the first shot just to test out the exposure and you take it and then you have to wait three seconds to look at the histogram. And then you have to readjust, maybe adjust the flash this way or just bring up your ISO or whatever. Take a second shot and then you look at the histogram. Again, it's another three seconds. It's, it doesn't show confidence uh, in you as a photographer. The client will be looking at you like, is it your camera, is your camera bad? Or are you just learning and why are you so slow? So for me, like it, it, wasn't, it wasn't for me. Um, I can see why so many people like this camera because it was like at the time it was revolutionary I mean it was a really really good camera at the time and it still is today to learn on if you are Like just getting into full-frame photography. You're not doing this for profit You're just want to get a camera that has full frame and you just take vacation pictures and you go out during the day And you don't need to go out at night or maybe you own a tripod and you just like to go out at night just to take long exposure shots then sure this camera's for you. If you don't have another body that that you are worried about changing batteries with, fine, this camera's for you. Um, if you have the time because you're learning so you take a shot and you just wait there patiently for your image to show up, again, completely fine, this, this camera is for you. Um, otherwise, I don't recommend you having this as a second body or just maybe even, you know, to do any professional work with it, to be honest with you. All right guys, so if you found this video useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Um, if you really wanna see that 5D Mark II video, let me know in the comment section down below. I'm not sure if you guys would like to see a video about that one. So far, I love this camera. It is my favorite camera that I've ever bought. <laughs> Trust me, I bought a lot of cameras in the past six months. Um, I may even like it a little bit better than my ADD, and that was my you know, my favorite camera of all time. Also, I'm trying out this new camera, it is the Rebel T6. Um, let me know how the video is. I'm also trying out the new Vixia 1080p camera, which is right here. If you'd like to see a full in-depth review about these two cameras, also leave it in the comment section down below and I will gladly do that for you in the upcoming weeks. All right guys, so if you like this video, you know, it helps me out, gives me a confidence boost. Hit the like button once. If you did not like this video, hit the dislike button twice. Until next time, peace.